let's make some save games. If you're making a game you want your player to be able to play, save their progress, quit the game, restart the game some hours or days later, and then pick up where they left off. Today we're going to go over the very basics of how you would set that up. And let's just immediately jump into it. First things first, we're going to make a new blueprint class, and this one is actually not going to be in the common ones. We're going to open all classes and look for save game. This is a object that you will be able to save to a file on the hard drive or SSD or whatever of your player, and then read from at a later date. Again, let's call that blueprint save game, and simply put, this is where we will store all of the information that we're going to be saving. You can also put in some code in here. I've honestly never personally used that before. So what we are going to be saving is going to be a few variables here. And that will be our coins, which will be a integer. And then we will also save our health, which will be a float. And let's also save the player's location, which will be a vector. Now, there's a bunch of other things that you want to probably be able to save, and this can get very complex and very busy very quickly, because you're also going to probably want to save the coins that have been picked up. So that way, when you reload the map, you can destroy all the coins that have already been picked up, so you can't pick up some coins, save your game, quit, reload the game and pick up those same coins again and same with enemies and so on and so forth that can get very complex very very quickly today we're going to stick to these three little things but the basic id remains the same you're going to set the values of these variables you're going to save that to a file on disk then you're going to read these variables again and put them back into the appropriate actors the way we are going to do that is going to be through the game mode here so i'm going to set up a custom event for save game in the game mode and we'll start off by creating a save game object there we have to choose a class which will be our bp save game that will return a object of the specific type bp save game which has access to these three variables that we have made after we've created that, we can set the coins and we can also then uh, set the health and we can set the location. Just like we would in any other variable type, we can just set these values to whatever we want them to be. Of course, in this case, we want all this information to come out of the player. So we'll get the player character and we will cast that to BP third person character. That way we have a reference to our player. From there, we can get our coins value. We can get our, I think it is called HP. Very bad naming conventions on my part. And we can get actor location. Hook that all up into the proper variable setting nodes so now when we save the game we're creating a save object and putting all of the values properly into the variables that we've created for them after that we can save game to slot so we get the save game object that we made in this first node over here we can plug that into the save game object and then the slot name we can give it any name we want. If you want to have multiple save slots, this is how that would work. You can have a array of slots, for instance, which is theoretically endless, and you can save them to specific slot names. You could even let your player just put in the slot name themselves. So long as the slot names don't match each other, they will just be saved as separate files. For now, we're just going to hard code in the fact that we're going to just call the save slot save to keep things simple. But know that that is a possibility that we might make a separate video on in the future. And saving your information really is as easy as that. If you run this custom event now, it will write something to disk with this information in it. Now, saving the game is kind of a useless thing to be able to do if you can't then load that data back into the game. 
and that's where we get into the interesting part. So let's make another custom event and call it load game. Now, when we load the game, the first thing we want to do is we want to check whether or not the slot with the proper name here even exists to begin with. So there's a note for that, does save game exist? And we can put in a slot name here, which will be save, and that will give us a bool value, which tells us, does this save that we're trying to load even exist in the first place? Because if it doesn't, of course, we're not going to be able to load anything out of it. But if it does, we can load a game from slots. And again, we need to put in our slot name. And then we get a save game object reference. This is a generic save game. If we want to try to get our coins out of this, that's not going to work. So we first need to cast that to our BP save game here. And now we can get our coins. We can get our health, get our location and set all those values into our third person characters. I'm just going to copy over what we put in here, which is get player character, cast to third person character. And from there, we can set the coins, we can set the HP, and we can set the actor location. And then, just as we did before, we're going to hook everything up into the corresponding setting node. And now, if we try to save the game, it will save it all to a file with the slot named save. And when we try to load the game, as long as the save game with the name save exists, it will load and then set all that information to the right character. So let's make a couple of buttons on our player character to actually trigger the save game and load game events. So opening up our third person character here, I'll add a S for saving and then an event L for loading. In both cases, we're going to get the game mode which I can just put in the middle here. I only need that node once. And we'll cast to our game mode tutorial game mode, which we'll also do in both cases here. And then from there, we can save game and we can load the game. So let's see if that works. Right now, I'm standing here. If I walk over here and I press the L key, nothing happens. But if I press the S key, we don't really get any confirmation, and the ASCII is a really bad key because that's also in WASD, so I'm going to change that in a moment. But if I walk over here and I press the L key, I'll get teleported over to the place where I saved. If I now damage myself a little bit and I press the L key again, you'll see my HP also restores. And if I restart the game again, I will be back to just the default place and health, and if I load my game, you can see I change place and my health goes back down. Let's just run this cutscene for a moment. I can pick up a coin and load my game. And you can see I have not picked up the coin again. But it doesn't actually like reset the level or anything. So the trigger box that has been removed after triggering that cutscene, you can see still is nowhere to be found. Because the only thing I did is execute a little bit of code to teleport me and to reset my stats. There's nothing about the level itself that actually gets reloaded. And that is the case in most like checkpoint and save systems in a lot of games. It doesn't actually need to reload the entire level because that will be very inefficient. Anyway, let's try and pick up a few more coins here. And then I will save. I will walk away. I'll damage myself a little bit and load again. And you can see this time I remain at two coins, I'll get my HP back, and so on and so forth. So we have a functioning, albeit very limited, saving system. Now combining it what now combining this with what we did before, and maybe instead of triggering this through just pressing the S and the L key, we add something to a menu, a save button to a menu, which calls that function on the game mode instead it will work the exact same way. So if you want to implement this into a UI, which you probably do, you should be able to easily do that with this video and the video about widget blueprints that has gone before. So now you can save and load game data. And of course, 
This is just three pieces of data in an actual save file. You're going to add in so much more separate data. It's not a very complex thing. It's just a very tedious thing to put all of that in there and get that all back into the places where it belongs when you load that data. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my cave digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas, 